Good morning and welcome to today's webinar celebrating Black History Month and rental housing. My name is Sarah Keen and I'm the Director of Member Programs at the National Apartment Association and I'm, and I'm excited to have you all here with us today. During today's webinar, we will be highlighting one of our accomplished rental housing leaders where she will share her journey to success and also the individuals that championed her along the way. Without further ado, I will pass over the webinar to today's moderator, Shakora Connor, CEO of Occupancy, Occupancy Heroes. Shakora? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Chakor Connor, and I'm the CEO and founder of Occupancy Heroes Incorporated. Today, I am extremely excited to be presenting this webinar on behalf of the National Apartment Association. This month, our country is celebrating a major holiday. That holiday is Black History Month. Black History Month is an annual observance originating in the United States where it is also known as African American History Month. It has received official recognition from governments in the United States and Canada, and most recently has been observed in Ireland, the Netherlands, and United Kingdom. Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing our central role in U.S. history. President Gerald Ford officially, officially recognized Black History Month in 1976, calling upon the public to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Today, we are celebrating Black History Month in the rental industry. We are celebrating Black leaders and their contributions to rental housing. We will showcase success stories and highlight challenges Black professionals face as we continue to build on these achievements to create a more inclusive workplace. In this webinar, we'll discuss such topics as celebrating the Black community, particularly those in the rental housing industry, actions needed from organizations to increase Black representation, and how to break down barriers for Black people in rental housing. We'll be joined today by Deidre Wilson. Deidre has been in the property management industry since 1996. Currently, Deidre is a regional manager with Blue Ridge Company. There, Deidre oversees over 2,000 apartment homes across North and South Carolina. Deidre has experience as a senior manager and mentor and has actively assisted in the development and growth of new Blue Ridge associates in their EPIC leadership program. Deidre co-chairs the Diversity, Equality, and Inclusion Program with Blue Ridge Companies. Deidre is also the very first person of color to be the president of the board with the Greater Charlotte Apartment Association in Charlotte, North Carolina. Ken Zemanski. Ken served as executive director of the Greater Charlotte Apartment Association for 32 years prior to retiring December 2018. He also served as executive director of the Apartment Association of North Carolina for 29 years. He was the 2018 recipient of the National Apartment, Apartment Association's Lifetime Achievement Award. He also served as chairman of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Coalition of Housing. His career in housing and community development has included jobs in Texas, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and his native New York. We also have Tammy Fossum. Tammy is the executive director of gym management with over 10,000 affordable units across the Southeast. Tammy has been in the multifamily industry since 1989 with extensive background in both the development and property management of conventional and affordable properties. Tammy has been actively involved in the Greater Charlotte Apartment Association since 1993, serving as its president in 2010. 
and a founding member of GCAA's Education Foundation, serving as president in the 2013 and 2014 years. She has been recognized throughout her career with numerous multifamily related industry awards. Next, we have Whitney. Whitney White's Whiteside celebrates more than 12 years in property management. Her career has been dedicated to Blue Ridge companies. Her passion for the industry has led her growth from leasing consultant to property manager overseeing 448 units in South Carolina. And finally, we have Carl Butler. Carl has more than 15 years experience in the property management industry. His current role is maintenance supervisor. He supervises the team that oversees 448 units in South Carolina. He currently celebrated 11 years with Blue Ridge Company. So guys, as you can see, we have a pretty amazing lineup of panelists today. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the discussion. And we're going to start with Ken. <laughs> so Ken, you bring so much knowledge to the table. You have had the great privilege of working with a large variety of property types uh, during your entire career. So we'd like to know, in your opinion, which community type would you say has been more successful in uplifting people of color? And why would you say that? Well, I think it's pretty clear if you um, go through the years. And um, uh, the question is, the individuals of color, what motivates them to be active and to want to make a difference? And often over the years, that's meant uh, dealing with neighborhoods of color, people of color, and buildings that are occupied by folks of color in order to benefit them. So uh, market rate housing has not done as good a job in part because it hasn't motivated those individuals, those would-be employees to rise to the occasion. It's not a labor of love that doesn't come from the heart as much as uh, working in uh, impoverished neighborhoods, trying to help individuals uh, do better in life, uh, turning around distressed properties. Those things have motivated traditionally uh, African-Americans in the rental housing business. And thus, they haven't been underrepresented for that product, but they have been very underrepresented in the market rate product for a variety of reasons that we'll talk about today, including the fact that it's just not as connected to them in wanting to make a difference. Wow. Okay. We appreciate uh, that info. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Tammy, we'd like to ask you the same question. In your opinion, which community type would you say has been successful in uplifting people of color? And why would you say that? Well, I've been very blessed. One, I've worked for companies that have always supported that. And Deidre and I mm -hmm. go back uh, four companies, starting with, uh, I was already an old person by then because I started in 89. <laughs> but uh, we have been at four different firms. So, um, and they were market rate. I actually am in affordable now, but Deidre and I never worked together in uh, affordable. So I think it all depends. I'm gonna have a little different opinion as in, if you're there to lift others up, then they will, they will come and they will grow. And that's my true belief. Um, I, my, my dearest friends in this industry, when we have girl nights, I am the token white girl. So, and I'm fine with that because I want you all, every color, every race, every religious denomination, it doesn't matter. Can you do a great job? Because the way I feel about it is if you do a good job, then I look good and my job is easier. So I'm always hiring the best person. And Deidre always was one of the best people. So I have to say, for me, I'm going to see it a little bit differently because I now am in affordable and uh, I do make sure that our company represents our profile. If I'm looking at candidates, they should represent who lives at my properties that should represent our company and, and everything we believe in. So yeah, we probably have more people of color because our residents are more people of color, but it's not I've just been very blessed to work for companies that that was never anything that was on our radar other than hire the best candidate. 
and then you keep lifting them up and you keep them moving with you. And Deidre and I have moved four companies together <laughs> and uh, we are no longer together, but we are still very good friends. So um, I'm gonna say that it's just, if we all, hey, I'm a woman and I run a firm and that wasn't what was happening when I started as well, but there were a lot of men that let me get into and learn all the things I needed to learn to be where I'm at. So everybody needs a mentor and everybody needs somebody to lift up that hand and lift them up so they can learn and grow. So that's really where I come from, Shakora. Thank you. Thank you for that. I love your response. Everyone should be involved, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So when someone asks me what actions are needed from organizations to increase Black representation, my mind immediately takes me to, to the top. I think about the organization and the industry as a whole. So when I think about leadership in the rental industry, I think about the National Apartment Association and all of its affiliates. Um, my first thought is always going to be the Greater Charlotte Apartment Association because I'm a Charlottean. <laughs> it's it's my home. It's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And it's also the very first apartment association that I ever joined. My firm joined in 2005. And for 15 years, I only saw white presidents of the board. And it wasn't until this year, 2021, that we finally see a black president of our board. And after 45 years, we now have a black female president. And her name is Deidre Wilson. So Deidre, tell me, how does it feel to be the first person of color to represent the GCAA as the president of the board? <laughs> well, <laughs> it, was, it was overwhelming at first um, because I was just like, you know, I wanna make sure I represent, you know, I represent people of color. I wanted to make sure I represented my company you know, properly, but also I wanted to make sure that they see me as a leader and I'm leading by example with that. But um, after a while, you know, after a few conversations, you know, with Tammy and, and, and everyone else, I kind of just said, okay, you know what? I've worked hard and this is, you know, this is the end result for me. You know, I worked very, very hard in this industry. So I just said, you know what? This is what I'm going to strive to do and I'm going to do it to the best of my capabilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Very good. And you know what? I personally can say, yes, I've known you for years. And yes, ma'am, you do work very hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so well deserved. And with Thank that you. being said, yes, ma'am, you are so welcome. Uh, so DJ, please tell us about your journey. You know, the journey as a whole, what challenges you faced and how you overcame them. Um, well, my first challenge when I first got into the industry was I was someone who came from Long Island, New York. So I had my thick New York accent um, and I'm down here where, you know, it's very Southern. So <laughs> it was it was very intimidating at first. And um, I just at the time I had someone who just really did not want that. But I worked hard. And I proved myself, you know, and I wanted to make sure that you saw that I can do the job regardless, you know, regardless of where, where I've come from, um, you know, as long as you teach me, I am, I am a sponge and I will soak it up and I will take it running. So that was just one of the biggest things, um, you know, that I had to, that I had to deal with, um, you know, part of it was because of the color of my skin at that time. But my manager at the time, Dawn Turner, she just said, you know, that's, she is a good person. I see something in her and we didn't train her. That's not her fault. Let's train her and see what she can do. And I thank God for that, you know, for her just saying, hey, let's do it, you know, and that the end result. And then I met Tammy, who just took the baton and carried me along the way with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Would you say that you went through any particular challenges uh, because you were a Black professional? Um, I, I, I did. I felt like at one point that I was pigeonholed at one particular, one particular demographic 
and when other opportunities, let's say in the uptown area came available or in a better area, I, I felt like I wasn't being considered when it came to certain situations. So that, you know, I wanted, I had, I wanted to make sure that I fine tuned my skills to make sure that you know and understand that I am a chameleon. I can go anywhere you need me to go. And the color of my skin should not hinder me because of you know where the property is located. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying that you overcame that because you worked hard. Mm -hmm. and, and I worked hard. To, okay, okay, very good. I did. Good. I worked hard, and um, and, I, and like I said, I had a few people along the way who did not, who, who, guided me through and and mm -hmm. told me you know okay this is what you need to do. I also give credit to my father. My father used to be general manager for New York Life Insurance. So from the management perspective, he he came to me and he said, you know, he was the only, he was one of the few African-American managers when he worked there. So he just said, you're going to overcome this. You're, you're going to go through this. The key is, this is what you still stay the course. The right person is why when you're, when you're, when you're in your job function, the right person is watching you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. That's a that's good advice. Now, uh, obviously, you had mentors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you've mentioned your father. You've mentioned Tammy. Uh, you know, that's a, it's so important. I believe that it's so important, no matter where we are within our life, to have a mm -hmm. mentor. Uh, can you give us? some more information about your mentors, you know, how did they help you? How, how they guide you through the process? Well, my, my mentors just really just showed me the business. They showed me the professional side of, Hey, this is, this is what you will have to do. Um, don't, don't be quiet. That was one of the biggest things that I heard. Don't be quiet, speak up, but just make sure you speak up professionally, but speak up speak your mind, let them know how you feel, let them know when it's not right. And my biggest thing is I'm going to hold you accountable. If I don't think this is right or fair, I'm going to let you know, um, you know, and that's one of the biggest things. And, and the thing about it is that my mentors let me do it. They did not shut me down. They did not shut me up. They listened to what I have to say, you know, as it, as it pertains to whatever the subject was, you know, mm -hmm. even, mm -hmm. even last year when we had to deal with everything with George Floyd, I had to speak up and say, hey, there is some serious anxiety even within the company. What are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the biggest things. That's when we started developing the diversity, equity, and inclusion task force within our company. So that's... That's good. And that's made a huge difference within your company, you'd say? It, it has we okay. very started, good so we're yeah. you know we're moving along just trying to get to know each other as a group um mm -hmm. you know, with everyone with all of the teams and things like different things like that we have different tasks that we're doing now that's good very good i know a lot of companies are working on that uh now let me ask you about your mentors again um mm -hmm. because i know right now so many people are looking for mentors mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that it was important? I'm sorry, you it, froze. It sounds like you had multiple. Do you feel mm -hmm. like that was, I'm good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question again, do you feel that it was important to your success to have multiple mentors? Absolutely, absolutely. You, you want to have multiple at different scales too. You want to have, you know, the owner operator, you want to have that person who's in accounting or that person who is the president of the company, because you want to, you want them to feed you with their knowledge. Um, so I, I think it's very important um, to have multiple different, different mentors. And, I, and I've had several, I've had, I have Tammy, I have Lisa Taylor, I've had Darlene Cobb, Susan Passmore, um, even even my boss, Royce Hawley, who has shown me, you know, just different things that, um, you know, throughout and just even talking to you, Chikora, you know, with the different things 
just within the company and just hearing what you've said, what you've said as far as with training, we got to make sure we're training people and we're training them properly. Mm -hmm. Can I interject? Uh, can I interject? Because I'm really good please. at that. Yes, I'd please. say that um, what we're what we're sometimes not thinking about with the with mentorship is exactly what everybody's trying to really get, which is diversity, and right. that's just different opinions. I will tell you that Deidre and I have agreed and we've disagreed um, as a mentor, as a mentee, as a friend, as me coming to her because your mentee becomes your mentor later in life. Now mm -hmm. we, you know, talk back and forth. So, but it is about diversity. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're not, if you go to the same, if you always hang with the people with the same opinions, well, you're just going right. to be whatever they are, a little clone. Right. Well, what we should all be doing is taking the best from a lot of people to make the best of us. Exactly. That is so right. That is so right. So Tammy, let me ask you a question. Did Deidre come to you and ask you to be her mentor or was it something that you decided that you wanted to do? I think it was just organic. It's just organic. Mm -hmm. I don't even think we even talked about you're my, I'm your mentor, you're my mentee or anything to that advantage. It just, I became someone that she could come to and I treat, I listened to her and I treated what she asked me in confidence. And even if sometimes she called me and said, not as my boss, not I'm talk, I'm, I need to talk to you as, as my mentor or as my friend, not as my boss right now. And mm -hmm. I would listen to her. I, I, hopefully she doesn't mind me sharing this, but when she was uh, first promoted to an area outside of Charlotte was the first time that I had really seen in her career where she felt like I am a fish out of water. I can feel the anxiety of my residents seeing my skin color. Mm -hmm. And that was for her and I to go through that together. It was at that point, she wasn't needing me to be, tell her that how to, how to do her receivables and how to do her budget. She knew all of that. She needed to know how do I emotionally deal with someone who doesn't want to talk to me because of the color of my skin. And the only way that I could relate to her was my first experience in affordable. I had the opposite. I was the only white person on our staff. So people didn't want to talk to the white woman in the office either. So I was like, you, you've got to show them that you care about them and that you're mm -hmm. going to do right by them. And that's all you can do. And as long as you're doing right by the person you're serving, mm -hmm. then you're, whatever the, the stigma is, whether it's mm -hmm. your religion, your color, your education background, or what have you, that's when it disappears because you continue to treat them fair doesn't matter what they're doing to you. And she did that. She overcame it. She was there for a long time. And it actually leads into the person she has that she's mentored. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so Tammy, you weren't asked to be a mentor. So why did you do it? Well, I just like to see other people grow. Again, I told you I want my job to be easier. <laughs> So the better you are under me, <laughs> right. honest, the better and easier my job is. <laughs> and I use that model. I use that model too. I'm just like, the better you do, the better I look, so the more you can grow. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't care. You know, maybe one day Whitney will be my boss, you know, and that's cool with me. You know, so I'm never right. really worried about it. And I'll tell you one time I went out on maternity leave and my staff there was a temporary manager and they got all upset thinking she was trying to take my job. And I said, if she takes my job, I gave it to her. Nobody's yeah. going to take my job yeah. because right. if I'm doing my job, you can't take it. So right. I was like, y'all quit worrying about what's going on and do your job because right. you're making me look bad, but not doing your job. So, um, and yeah. I think Susan Passmore, um, that leads Blue Ridge is, is an exemplary at hiring people that she's like, that's fine. You're better than me at this. Do it. Um, and mm -hmm. so that's what I think it's, a, that's something that's within you. Very good. Very good. Well, we're glad it's within you, Tammy. <laughs> now, Whitney, Deidre hired you when you first came into the industry and she was, now she's your regional. So tell us what, what it's like seeing her grow into this powerhouse that we see today and mm -hmm. How has she helped you to grow from that young girl walking through the door in your teen years into a property <laughs> manager overseeing 448 units? <laughs> it's been it's been a pleasure knowing her and watching this happen. Um, I met her when I was 19 and I knew nothing. I knew nothing. 
Um, she actually didn't hire me. I had two managers prior who were both wonderful. Mm -hmm. Deidre really took me in and showed me how to do the things the correct way. She really led me by example. You know, she, she always taught me to speak up. She always taught me to make sure that I'm doing my best job. So nobody else does take my job, just as Tammy said. Um, you know, she, it, it's been an absolute pleasure working under her because she has taught me how to, you know, stand on my own two feet and in turn teach my staff how to do the same. Very good. Each one teach one. I like it. Carl, what has it been like for you growing with Deidre in this industry? Um, I don't know. I, I, Deidre actually did hire me. And at first, you know, we're a little opposite. If you hear her talk and hear me talk, <laughs> she's from the whole opposite end of the country. But um, we've always had a good time together. And um, she taught me a lot and got me. I used to be on a C property. So I'm looking at stuff a whole different light than she was looking at it. And she taught me a lot. And, Helped me grow as a maintenance guy, actually. Oh, and she would have turned on and helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How does that feel, Deidre, to hear that? It feels How great. That feel? It feels great to hear that because sometimes you do think when you're working mm -hmm. is in vain. But to hear them say that, I think that's awesome. Um, you know, just the fact that they're here that is awesome and I thank them for you know for their time and effort and just and listening and being open to listen to what I have to say um, we we've, we've had some rough patches but all of this outweighs it because I know now I can go to them honestly and I can say hey I need you to do this this and this and they'll be like all right no problem I got you and that that's a great feeling to to have to know that people have your back like that you know yeah, absolutely. Ken, we're going to circle back around to you. And I just want to ask you, what advice would you give to help break down barriers for Black people? Well, you know, it's it's a two-way street. In rental housing. Yeah, it's a two-way street in terms of the barriers. Mm -hmm. And we need to, as an industry and as a society, need to do a far better job of making people aware of a career path and how attractive it is and how meaningful and satisfying it is to get in the apartment industry, you know, at the high school level, the junior college level, the college level, and to make the coursework and the apprenticeships available, get people to get them a foot in the door, learn more about the industry through their local associations and others, and then develop that career path so they become uh, entry level people, then mid people, then senior people. So I think we just need to put on a full court press to make that happen, you know, as uh, the companies and as the hirers, the employers. And, and on an individual level, I, I would kind of challenge the youth, whether they're black or white or, or, or Hispanic or other nationalities, to be curious about what their career paths can be like and to mm -hmm. explore and to question folks about what things might look like. And what would it be if I'm 25 years old and all of a sudden I'm in the apartment business in management or maintenance? You know, what would, would that be satisfying? Would I make decent money? Uh, and we need to do that in a much more colorblind way and even in an affirmative way mm -hmm. so that we'll make those opportunities better and make the realities better that the hiring's uh, more uniform and more equitable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tammy, I'd like to ask you the same question. What advice would you give to help break down barriers for Black people in the rental industry? Um, I believe, yeah, I'm kind of with Ken, we need to recruit more. We've got to get a foundation of good talent coming into in order to feed up. So um, mm -hmm. if you don't have that talent coming in, then you can't promote up and you can't have leaders of color unless you're as a company focusing on that. Um, I know that, you know, people talk bad about these programs, but they're incentive programs for you out there for hiring persons of color or veterans or whatever your target demographic is where you get tax credits. So, you know, I don't think as an industry, we focus on that, which gives the company incentive to go out there and get that talent. But we have to bring the talent in so that we can promote them up because, uh, and we have to train our talent no matter what they are um, or where they come from. And, and we have to have tough conversations. When Deidre was alluding to her, to her New York thing, <laughs> you know, is when she came across very strong to a Southern 
profile of resident and then they rebelled against her. So she had to learn how to soften herself to serve that customer because it's not about us on this call. It's about the customer. It's the end user. It's the resident. And that's who we all have to communicate to. So we have to, we have, to have the tough conversations like Deidre's prior manager had with her of like, okay, you know, when you said this, the Southerner hears this. And it's no different mm -hmm. than when we do personality tests. Hey, I'm a red. I'm sure everybody knows red, assertive person. Um, then there's blue people that are caring and those types of things. I've had to learn to control my assertiveness. It doesn't help if I'm mentoring Deidre, if I'm always just giving her the answer. Mm -hmm. If I'm just telling her what to do, I'm just dictating her. I have to exactly. say, what do you think, Deidre? Let me hear what you think. What do you want to do? And for me, as my personality type, I'm sure Deidre saw me bite my tongue off sometimes where she's like, oh, I know she just wants to tell me what to do, right? <laughs> and I have to control myself because of my personality type. It is no different. All of that translates if you're truly mm -hmm. embracing that we are all different. We come from different backgrounds. We have different opinions, but we're here to be together. And when Deidre mentioned the George Floyd thing, we had a dinner after that. She and I and someone who was Latino and another good friend of ours. So we are a very diverse group, but we openly talked about and there everybody had different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and we brought something, but we could all talk about it because we respected each other. So to right. me, we've yeah. got to respect each other, but we've got to bring more talent in. So I agree with Ken. We've got to go out there and tell the youth. And yes, my advice to Deidre was you passing up on being on the executive board is passing up telling every little black girl out there that she can't do it. And maybe that was that to her kind of like, dang, Tammy, you don't have to be so blunt. And I also said that to one of her friends too, who mm -hmm. was a person of color. Because I said, you have this power now to show your family and your friends and the people you go to church with, this is what a black woman can do. Your decision, your decision, but you make that decision. Do you want to not be able, you're saying that when you say, I can't do this. Can I, I don't think I can do this. That's what you're saying to the world. And she's like, I ain't saying that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so you've got you've got to you've got to be in diverse in your recruitment, and we've got to get to that talent and get them in the industry. Mm -hmm. I'm a woman of many words, so I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good. We like your words, Tammy. We like them, uh, Deidre. I'm going to ask you the same question. What advice would you give to help break down the barriers for Black people in rental housing? I I would say. You need to you need to get to know who, first who is already working for you, mm -hmm. and and I and there's just there's such a talent pool just within 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 the um within companies, but I do think you need to you need to be open to it. A lot of companies are just not open to it, and they immediately you know if they hear my New York accent, they're immediately going to shut it shut it down and say. Well, no, she's not a good fit, but I could bring such talent. That person can bring such talent to your organization, you know, so you can't, you can't just shut them, shut them out just because of, you know, oh, well, I, I don't know if she fits this look that we're going for, meaning, you know, the color of my skin or, you know, just, you know, if this is a person of color, if this is a Hispanic person, um, someone who is Indian, you know, you need to, you Companies need to, organizations need to be open to that. And I just don't think some organizations are open to that. And I, that's, that's where, you know, I feel like you miss such a huge talent pool when you're, when you do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Ken, I have a question for you. Uh, you've worked on state level, local level within the association we just want to know, do you, what do you think about uh, the involvement and in the association from people of color? Do you think that it's beneficial? Is it okay if, if there is no representation? What is, what is it for someone of color to be involved in the association? I don't think it's okay if you have no one of color because then it's like a reflection it kind of speaks to what the organization is like, and that's not a good message. It needs to be a reflection 
of the population, including the rental population. And, you know, Deidre talks about her roots in the New York City metro area. And I think it's very commendable because that's an important part of her background in what's the biggest melting pot in the USA of mm -hmm. diversity and acceptance and occasionally friction. But people in that New York City metro area, they had a long tradition of understanding, uh, getting along with folks, uh, inclusion, all those things, you know, and respect, dignity, those things are so important. And I think as communities like Charlotte and other Sunbelt cities become more diverse and metropolitan, we can learn from the older big cities about people getting along and employment opportunities and being treated right as a resident and all those things. And as, as far as the industry is concerned too, in the political world, you want to have individuals who speak at public hearings, who speak before a city council like Deidre did at a fair housing proclamation with about one hour's notice one time and did a fantastic job. <laughs> Thank you. She was speaking from the heart and she was speaking about her experience and that of her coworkers and that of her residents and how important they all are in a community. So absolutely having people of color in important positions and invisible positions and making a difference in the conversations is what is needed. Mm -hmm. I agree. Can, mm -hmm. can I Go ahead. just say one thing? I, I do think once they see that, once companies, um, the staff members see that, mm -hmm. I think that empowers to make this person say, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, like even when I became regional, there were a lot of people, they were like, you're a regional, you know, I could be a regional too. Like, wow, that's very, very interesting. So I think it also shows that, hey, she did it. I could do it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Deidre, let me ask you, do you feel like you being the president of the board is going to make a difference because you are not only a person of color, but a woman of color? I, I hope it does. I hope I hope they start to see that, you know, we we are bringing forth, you know, I, I do hope that it does change. I do hope some people start to open and see, hey, we really need to reevaluate some of the things that we do in our organization, in our organizations. And I do feel that um, I do think it will open up the door tremendously for a lot of people. I, I know I want to open up the doors myself and just say, hey, come on, let's go. <laughs> See what we can do together, you know? So I think that's the biggest thing that I wanna do. I wanna make sure that, you know, we, we, see, we see what's on our sites as well as in upper management as well. Mm -hmm. Very I'm good. Gonna add too, I think for the Greater Charlotte Apartment Association, um, one of the things that uh, when Ken and I worked together uh, there was we started the Leadership Lyceum and it was that we needed to ask, um, ask. we had to ask Deidre to dance, to go to the Leadership Lyceum. We had to ask Melody Adama. So we had to ask Brandy Robertson. We had to ask them. They were not, uh, since they were the minority, they were not going to ask, can I be in this class? I, more people need to say, can I, well, because it's not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're overlooked, like Deidre said, because you didn't speak up. You didn't right. speak up. But we did have to, Ken and I had to make a concerted effort and he would say, who do we know? Who would be, who needs to be future leaders? And then we, we asked them to come to that class. We, we, we wanted and we recruited. So, and that continued. So I think that's also very key is that you have to be aware of whether you're leading a company or you're leading an association or you're leading a committee. It doesn't matter what, what you're doing. You've got to sometimes ask people that are, you're trying to bring into that fold that brings right. in those perspectives and brings in those opinions, but they want to be asked to the dance. All right. Very good. Well, guys, we could keep this conversation going forever. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up. But before we go, I am going to ask you guys any final thoughts. Would anyone like to add to the conversation before we close out? I would like to say a few words to Deidre. Sure. Okay. I wrote down some stuff for you. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> but I just want to say when I met you all those years ago, I had no idea who you would become to me. You've become a mentor, a role model, and a friend. And of all the people in my life, you've always been constant. 
You've been with me through my biggest accomplishments professionally and personally. And without you in my life, I would have missed out on a lot of life, life lessons. You know, one of the biggest things you ever taught me was that not to follow money, always follow your heart because your heart will take you exactly where you belong. And I'm having that conversation with you about 10, 11 years ago. And it, it still resonates with me very much so. Wow. Um, Cause I didn't come in this, in this industry to stay. But because I had you as my mentor, I grew into a community manager very quickly. And now I have a family and a career. Um, you've taught me that being a manager is so much more than just being in charge. It's about teaching your team the highest quality of performance so they can grow into their own careers. And your drive, passion, and knowledge have been unparalleled. I'm so proud of you. And you've inspired me and so many more, more than you'll ever know. So just thank you for bringing me along on your journey. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> Whitney, Whitney. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I really, mean, I really appreciate you. I really do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. That is just like going to make me like really, really cry. And I make a point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It has been my pleasure, you know, just working with both you and Carl. It has truly been a pleasure working with you guys. You guys get me. So that's the thing that I love is that they get me. I had a little something wrote, but I don't know if I can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carl, we know you are a man of few words. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to say thank you for everything you've done for me. I'm glad to have you as a friend and as a mentor and as a boss or whatever. Whatever we are, but I love to have you. I thank you for letting me ride along on your journey. And I'm sure you got a long way to go from here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Okay, keep it going. Ken, your turn. <laughs> well, I want to congratulate Deidre on her ascendancy and her growth down through the years. I've known Deidre for maybe somewhere around 20 years. She worked with a few companies mm -hmm. before Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. And she was always effective and she was always capable and she kept her eye on the ball and she continued to grow and develop and uh, elevate her game. And uh, congratulations on your 2021 GCAA presidency. Thank you. You're one of the very few African-American presidents of either gender of any local apartment association in the nation. So wow. you're a great role model. It's been my pleasure to know you down through the years. I think we've got along good. We've done some constructive things together and mm -hmm. keep up the good work. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> I guess I would add, Deidre, that <laughs> your path was not a straight one. <laughs> it had many obstacles, um, but you know oh, yeah. what? That's what made you great and that's what made you passionate and that's what's made you who you are and that's what's made you a great leader for Whitney and Carl and all the team that's had the pleasure of working with you over the over your career. So um, I know that uh, one of the things that I would say makes you great is self-reflection. You always would say, "Okay, here's what I see I did, and this is what I this is what I own in this process." And um, that takes a big person because a lot of people can't self-reflect. Um, they always want to point at the other person and all the things that got in their way. And you know that you and I've always talked about the inspiration that your father must be. Um, now, also, he let me pay him cookies one time, which was just <laughs> phenomenal when he came over to my house. <laughs> I love any man that'll take cookies over money. So <laughs> uh, but you, he's been a great role model. And I think that the strength that he gave you to look at it as not an obstacle, but look at mm -hmm. as something that, what am I going to do about it? Just right. what am I going to do about it versus somebody else do it for me? And that's what's made you a success. So I appreciate it. And I appreciate our friendship now more than ever. Thank you, everyone. Thank y'all. That was just so beautiful. <laughs> that was wonderful. Uh, you know what? I am, I'm just, Deidre, we've known each other for several years. And yes. I'm just, I'm just blessed to know you. I'm honored. I'm so Thank proud you. of you. I could not <laughs> be any more proud of you. You're going to do great things. You're such an inspiration to many. And this is Black excellence. 
<laughs> you know, you are, this is the now, this is the today, and you are forging the way for so many. Uh, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. So with that being said, that is going to close us out. Uh, go and be great, people. Happy Black History Month. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, guys.